A lawmaker wants pot to be legalized in New Mexico and wants that law in the state constitution. Albuquerque Democrat Jerry Ortinez Pino filed a constitutional amendment that would regulate marijuana like alcohol, taxing it and making it legal for those older than 21. The proposal will have a hard time getting on the ballot. It needs majority support in both the Democrat-controlled Senate and Republican-controlled House. The polling is strong on this issue. Um, we, we really do think that New Mexicans, given a chance to, to vote on it themselves, would approve it. Governor Susana Martinez is firmly against legalizing marijuana, but a constitutional amendment would go around her. Marijuana was legalized last year in Washington, D.C., Oregon, and Alaska, and is already legal in Washington State and Colorado. An officer-involved shooting sent two people to the hospital in Hobbs. New Mexico State Police say around 1.30 yesterday morning, a Hobbs police officer went to Diamond Little, Lil's Bar to respond to a fight. State police are not saying much, only that shots were fired when the officer got there. The officer was not injured, but two other people were shot and airlifted to a Texas hospital. It's unclear how they were involved or what their condition is. State police tell us six officers from four different agencies shot at a murder suspect last week. It happened during a chase on I-10 near Lordsburg. Police say when 23-year-old Dewan Holloway pulled over, he started firing at officers with two pistols. Officers fired back, hitting Holloway. He was then airlifted to a hospital. Police say Holloway has a warrant from Mississippi for capital murder. State police say three of their officers fired shots, along with a motor transportation officer, a Lordsburg police captain, and a sergeant from the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office. None of them were hurt in the shootout. The NTSB has released their report on a deadly hot air balloon crash that killed a Balloon Fiesta veteran. Last year in May, the balloon carrying pilot Daniel Kirk and passengers Natalie Lewis and Ginny Doyle exploded after hitting power lines. The report says the pilot engaged the burner for about 15 seconds to try to avoid the power lines. The report doesn't explicitly say why the balloon still hit those lines, but it does highlight that it takes 6 to 15 seconds for a burner to be effective. A balloon can travel almost the length of a football field in 10 seconds. There was a five-mile area where investigators recovered cell phones, GPS devices, and wreckage pieces. Kirk had been flying since the early 80s. He flew during several Albuquerque balloon fiestas. Texas siblings who survived a horrific car crash that killed both of their parents have spent the last three and a half years healing. This year, part of that healing process is to join the Houston Marathon race that their parents loved to run. Samica Knight explains the children's plans. I didn't think I would remember seeing it, and then right when I saw it, like all the memories came flooding back. I was like, I remember my dad wearing that shirt running the marathon. For 13-year-old Peter Berry and his 11-year-old brother Aaron, the Chevron Houston Marathon brings so many memories of their parents, Joshua and Robin Berry, on race day. We'd be waiting and we'd finally see them and they'd come over and say hi. Years ago, Peter and Aaron were among thousands along the race route. The kids there to cheer on their parents, but this year they have a different role. It's a great honor to just go out there and um, support all the runners and just be on stage and get to start the marathon. The two are the official starters of the race. Go! For so many, they are a symbol of perseverance and strength. You see, three years ago, the brothers, their younger sister Willa and their parents were in West Texas, headed home from a family vacation when a distracted driver crashed into them head on, killing both parents. Willa had broken bones, but Aaron and Peter were left paralyzed from the waist down. It hasn't been easy. With all the support we get, that makes it a lot easier. And um, with all the help and um, our cousins and our friends, that they're always keeping us up. Peter and Aaron have found a new normal and often encourage each other while clutching a cherished photo. This says it was 2009 on the tags. So this, I guess, must have been like right as they finished, they took a picture. The Barry brothers say they'll be thinking of their parents at the starting line, all while encouraging the runners to run on. Saying that our parents ran it and then like we're gonna run it when we're older. So it's like you guys should just like keep, you know, running, then stop. 
That was Samika Knight reporting. The Barry children are now members of the large family led by their aunt and uncle and live in a full house with lots of cousins. Hundreds of marchers honored Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy yesterday in downtown Albuquerque. The theme of the march, walking the dream. Hundreds walked to Civic Plaza from University and MLK in honor of the legendary civil rights activist. This is the march's 31st year. The city and community leaders will continue celebrating Dr. King's life and accomplishments tomorrow. The 25th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration kicks off at 1 tomorrow afternoon. The event honors New Mexico's organizations and people who have worked to advance Dr. King's values through volunteering. A small group of people got a tour through Albuquerque's Bosque yesterday as the city gave them a look at plans to upgrade the trail. More than 20 people went on that hike. The mayor wants to improve more than a mile of trails in the part of the Bosque where the Rio Grande crosses central to up north past I-40. The $3 million plan would add more signs and parking as well. One woman with a local environmental group gave us her thoughts. Sounds a whole lot better than the previous plan which had buildings and and um, ball courts and things like that. We want people to be intimate with wildlife and learn how to live with their wild neighbors. The city is holding another tour next weekend in another section of the trail. An eight-year-old girl is in the hospital after her younger sister accidentally shot her. The Farmington Daily Times reports yesterday the girls were helping their father clean the house in Flora Vista. The six-year-old sister picked up a rifle and pulled the trigger hitting the eight-year-old in the neck. The eight-year-old girl is in critical condition in San Juan Regional Medical Center. That was as of last night. Well, Albuquerque police say a person was taken to the hospital yesterday from a home on Pennsylvania near Central. Police aren't saying what happened to that person, but there was crime scene tape up and a significant police presence at the scene. And a man is recovering this morning after being pulled from his burning apartment. First responders arrived Friday afternoon at a complex near San Mateo and Lomas. There they found an unconscious 60-year-old man and two dead dogs inside the home. He was rushed to UNM Hospital. One side of his body badly burned. Crews say they were able to contain the fire to one building, but three people are now out of a home. AFD does not know what caused the blaze. Someone left behind a lot of money after a shopping trip to an Albuquerque Savers. Now police and the thrift store are teaming up to find the man. Happened to see uh, a large amount of money on the floor. And as soon as I found that, I took it straight over to the office. It happened Wednesday morning at the Savers near Carlisle and Manal. Nathan Fisher, a manager with the store, noticed the wad of cash as he was cleaning the floor. He says he did not think twice about turning it in. APD has the money now. They're not releasing much information like how much is there or how it's packaged so that only the owner knows and can come forward. Surveillance video released shows the man walk up to the counter, drop off some clothes, then go to his backpack near the door to get some money. Fisher thinks he dropped it as he was gathering his things. Police say he did the right thing in turning in that money. There's a lot of good people in Albuquerque who do good things all the time, and specifically at the Savers, this manager, this young guy, did the right thing. Police are hoping someone recognizes the man or that he sees this story. Anyone with a tip can call 242 COPS. Police say if no one claims the money after a certain amount of time, it could go to Fisher. The state's highest minimum wage rate is about to go up again. Santa Fe's minimum wage is set to bump up to 1084 in March. That's an 18 cent increase from where it stands now to match inflation. The capital city's minimum pay per hour is only lower than San Francisco's and Seattle's. A man almost drove off with just a traffic ticket, but a small slip led police to a big pot bust. It happened Friday when a New Mexico state police officer pulled over Reginald Pope for speeding just west of Albuquerque on I-40. The officer had just wrapped up writing his citation and told Pope he was free to go, but then he asked a few more questions. Police say Pope told the officer his sister rented the car, but the name did not match the paperwork. That made the officer suspicious, and his canine picked up on a scent. When the car trunk was opened, police say they found seven bundles of pot weighing almost 170 pounds. Pope was in court yesterday. I am concerned that you are flight risks, sir, and so if you do not return for any future court appearances, that would be an amount sufficient to encourage a bounty hunter to go and bring you back to New Mexico. 
Pope, who lives in North Carolina, will have to cover a $7,500 cash or surety bond, meaning he needs $750 to bond out. An animal welfare group is looking into how a dozen chihuahuas dropped off at a rescue ended up in such rough shape. The dogs were found in Edgewood on Wednesday in snow-packed crates. Animal Humane staff say two of the dogs were so ill they had to be euthanized. Ten chihuahuas are now in isolation. Many of the dogs have extreme skin conditions. Animal Humane staff say all of the dogs are female, ranging in age from eight months to adult, and some of them are pregnant. It's unclear if this is a case of hoarding or if these dogs were part of a puppy mill. Well, they may be cute and cuddly, but dogs are not great readers. Even so, as, em as News 13's Emily Younger shows us, a program involving dogs is helping kids learn in the classroom. Hi, Jenna. This is Coda. It starts with a simple hello. Coda um, is excited to see what kind of book you have chosen. As kiddos at this library near Santa Fe get comfy. I've chosen Waggers, and I think it's a really fun book. And flip open a book for their new canine friend. Oh, look, it's doggies, Coda. It's all part of a Santa Fe Animal Humane program called Wags and Words. A few airplane. Kids who have trouble reading or just don't feel comfortable doing it in front of their peers get to share their stories with pups. It's helping these children become confident in the world. Shar Crone is the owner of the therapy dogs. Take a bow. Good girl. When I, I get the feedback from the parents of the improvement with the children, sometimes I'm just teary-eyed thinking, oh gosh. One of those children is nine-year-old Gemma. Are you enjoying reading to him? Yeah, it's really nice that he's listening. Today, as the fourth grader read Coda a story, the Border Collie seemed plenty interested in the tale. It felt good to me, like he is enjoying the story that I'm reading to him. It was a similar feeling for seven-year-old Cade. You get to pet the dog, and the dog enjoys you reading to him. Crone says the program, which has been around since May, has helped a number of kids gain confidence and read better. This is why I do this, because the reward is just phenomenal. Phenomenal for the volunteers, Coda, da -da. the dogs, and the kids. Thanks, Coda, for listening to me. Emily Younger, KRQE News 13. Wags and Words meets three times a week at a library in El Dorado and is free to anyone who wants to participate. It's become so popular, there's now a waiting list. For more information about the program, just go to krqe.com.